Hi guys and welcome to Project Battlefit Plus. For a lot of time I was wondering what is the content that I should be putting out on my channel and then I figured the best content for me to put out would be the content that responds to the needs of my own clients. Because I am responsible for their progress and for their growth so I'd rather make content that suits them first and then the general public. So I'll be putting out workout sheets for my clients and this video especially deals with the workout sheet that I put out recently which was for level 3 of the Battlefit training program which is for lean strength games. Right? So in the level 3 program what I have done is I have divided the workout into 3 days of weight training and 3 days of cardio with one rest day every week. This is pretty much the standard push-pull routine with a minor variation and with periodization taken out. What that is I'll explain step by step as we go along. First, the three days of strength training. The very first day of strength training would involve legs. The second day that you train, you would be doing cardio, any cardio that you choose. For cardio, you can choose anything from any three cardio machines in the gym for 20 minutes each. Whereas if you're doing a rower, you'll probably do minimum of 2500 meters. If you're running, you would always keep the treadmill above 6 kmph. So basically you want to work out, you don't want to just lounge around on the cardio machines, that is not cardio. If you can talk while you're doing cardio, trust me you're not doing cardio. Right? So always keep that as a parameter for your cardio sessions. I personally choose martial arts for my cardio because I hate running on treadmills, I hate working on machines. Rowing and martial arts is my cardio, you can choose something you like doing. You can choose an activity like badminton or martial arts or dance or anything that you like doing. You can go out cycling, you can go out running, whichever is your form of cardio, you do that. But when it comes to strength training, the protocols are pretty strict and you can follow them exactly down to the T. Which is why I put out a chart which details every week for 12 weeks and every day and every workout that you do, including the reps and the sets of those workouts. So the very first day as I said would be legs. The second day you do cardio, the third day you do all the pull movements, all the pulling movements because this is from derived from the classical push-pull routine which you can do, read about online anywhere you want but just with a minor variation so that it is adaptable to everybody who practices it. Right, so the second day is purely dedicated to pulls. Right, you're going to do your deadlifts, you're going to do your bent over rows, good mornings, uh, lat pull down, cable rows, biceps, all those muscles all together. The day after that, again you'll do a day for cardio. The day after that, you would do all your pushing movements, which is your chest, your shoulder, and your triceps. Right, there's a CST. And after that, you'll again do a day of cardio, after which you would take a rest day. Now, a lot of people get very excited and skip over rest day, but trust me, rest day is very, very important because you can break your body in the gym, but you build it on your rest day. People say, can I skip my nutrition on my rest day? Can I skip my protein shakes on my rest day? Can I skip my meds on my rest day? Can I skip my multivitamins on my rest day? No, you cannot because on your rest day is actually when your body is building itself back. So on the rest day, your nutrition is actually of utmost importance. On the rest day is the day you treat your body to recover through the, all the punishment you've put it through all week long. Right? Rest day is extremely important. I do not advise ever skipping it, no matter how excited you are. It's okay if you have only one month to prepare for something and you're going to go all out. That much you can deal with. But beyond that, if you want to make it a regular lifestyle, skipping rest day continuously is highly not recommended because bodybuilding is a tripod. You have your training, you have your nutrition, and you have your rest and recovery. You hamper any one of these three and you are going to have a misbalanced development. Right? So rest day is extremely important. I sometimes go for a massage on a rest day if I've worn myself out really hard in the gym. A massage does good, a deep tissue massage helps. It helps relax your body, relax your muscles, gives your body time to recover from itself, from the trauma, from the micro trauma you have given the muscles. And then you're ready and all set to go for the next week. All charged in the gym again. All right? Let us go step by step through leg day. All right? So on leg day, what I have done is I've given you squats, uh, lunges, leg press, seated calf raise, standing calf raise, and hamstring curl. But now this is one leg day. On the next leg day that you do, you would replace your lunges with a front squat and an overhead squat because you want to develop all kinds of movements in the initial stages itself. If you start building up a body which is not trained for advanced movements in the initial stages 
as you go ahead it becomes very difficult for you to advance into weightlifting movements or other movements that you might want to get to at higher levels all right so the second time the second week when you do legs you would do squats but instead of lunges you would do front squat and overhead squat now you can place your front squat and overhead squat ahead of your squats if you want or after your squats if you want the advantage of placing it ahead of your squats is that you can use it as a warm up for your squats because your foundation is overhead squats will almost always be way lower than your back squat right the foundage of your front squat will be lesser or equal to your back squat but your back squat is always the strongest so you can build up with an overhead squat going to a front squat then going to your back squat right and in each you're doing three sets okay and in all the exercises that i have given you would be doing three main sets of 10 reps each of 8 to 10 reps each right and when i say 8 to 10 reps each that doesn't mean you pick a weight that is so light that you can bang out 10 reps and still go five more no when i say 8 to 10 reps means at the 8th you should begin feeling almost and 10th should be really really challenging for you that's a right way to take up like on the third set almost never have i completed the 10th rep on the third set i almost fail almost always fail at the 8th or 9th rep and that is how i know i'm doing the right ways if i manage to go all 10 next week i increase the poundage by a little i increase the poundage by 2.5 or 5 pounds so that i know i'm constantly growing i'm constantly pushing myself to get better and better even with the same reps and same cycles that i'm doing right so after the three main sets you half whatever weight you were doing and immediately go for a set to failure or of up to maximum 20 reps not more than that now i'm saying 20 because i don't want to push you into a catabolic zone where you start losing muscle you constantly want to keep on building muscle muscle is precious right get that get that very clearly muscle is precious at no point you on your strength training days do you want to lose muscle so 20 reps is a max you'll push yourself to no matter how much fatigue how much pain what happens you're going to push yourself through and sometimes you'll not even complete those 20 reps sometimes you'll fail at the 10th 11th 12th that is fine the last set is just to make sure that you have put in your 110% because what happens is even with me even with me even with people who are training at way advanced levels you get so obsessed with gaining strength and going heavier and heavier and heavier is that you lose focus on putting 110% into your workout your form is not perfect most of the time you think you're pushing a 1 rm you think you're pushing a 3 rm but actually you're not your form itself has not developed enough to push a genuine 3 rm or a 1 rm so what you're actually doing at those heavier poundages is not maximal effort and what i want you to do is put in maximal effort which is why after your three main main sets i want you to push yourself to a set which will actually challenge the limits of your that muscle that you have been working out all right or that lift so that when you're done with it you're actually done with it your body is done with it your mind is done with it you're ready to move on to the next right so your squats you have on the next day you have front squat and overhead squat then you have the leg press So you're done with the quads. Then you move on to the seated calf raises, standing calf raises, and hamstring curls. Now, there's a reason why the calf is placed ahead of the hamstring curls because in the hamstring curls, your calf, if it has not been worn out, will assist your hamstring curl. So you'll not be getting the most out of your hamstring curl workout. So you want to tire out your calf completely before you switch to hamstring curls in the end, which is why hamstring curls is always in the end in the leg workout. In the pulls. I have alternated deadlifts with bent over rows and good mornings in the next week. And so the general order of the uh, pull workout goes like deadlifts, lat pull down, wide grip and narrow grip. Then you go to cable rows, then you go to high rows or reverse pec deck flies, bicep curls and hammer curls, right? So your leg day and uh, pull day are generally extremely long workout days, right? In this you will alternate the deadlifts in the next week with a bent over row and a good morning and why do i do that is because on the day that you do deadlifts deadlifts is a very tough lift it's going to take out everything from your body there's no way you're going to have energy left to put in 100% into a bent over row or a good morning after having done deadlifts so ideally do deadlifts on one week the next week you do bent over rows and you do good mornings so bent over rows are not as challenging as deadlifts so you still have lower back strength left for you to be able to pull off good mornings after that which is why this partition is done similarly there's a partitioning between high rows and reverse back deck flies so one week i suggest you train with three weights which is high rows 
and next week you take assistance of a machine to develop the same muscle because and the only reason I personally do the switch is because the shoulder joint is not a joint that can take a lot of wear and tear you don't want to be challenging it non-stop because you're going to be challenging it with the overhead presses you're going to be challenging it with overhead squats you're going to be challenging it again in the red delt rows so sometimes give it a break and just assist it with the machine the workout is going to be the same but you might get some a little more help in recovery for, for that muscle for the joint which is very essential for those joints i don't want my clients to run out of their joint strength and keep developing their muscular strength because eventually your joints your muscles your body everything has to work in unison to keep you really fit like back fit all throughout life right and then you end your pulls with your basic bicep curls and hammer curls and I, I am notorious for skipping them but I suggest you do them everybody loves a good bicep and yeah you can just use them as finishers I generally don't go through all the four sets I skip I do two sets two sets each and that's okay that's a personal preference but if you're following the chart to the T follow the same routine you do three main sets followed by one finisher set and move on I am not that obsessed about biceps I try to put everything into my main lifts first and that gives me decent enough biceps I think so uh, I personally don't do it but I recommend you do it and if I actually had the time I would do it if I'm not challenged for time if I if my gym is not shutting down by the time I'm not done with my workout I still complete my entire workout as I have started it myself by the way so bicep curls and hammer curls and there's a reason why I push the hammer curls towards the end again because it targets a different muscle and if you notice you can actually put, pick up way more weight in hammer curls than your bicep curls so you might as well tire out your bicep first and then finish them off with the hammer curl right with, with literally almost the same weight but since your bicep is already tired out the hammer curl will now seem tougher right and the last week training day would be the push day right so in pushes you do your decline bench press your incline bench press your bench press your bar barbell overhead press and your dumbbell overhead press your lateral raises parallel bar dips and cable push down you can get all the charts downloadable in the link i'm providing below um, all these videos and all these charts are free until this becomes a paid channel so make the most of it share it with your friends who need it because the complete splits are given in the chart below again in pushes what we are doing is we're taking decline bench press first because 80 percent of your pectorals are involved in a decline bench press your pectorals are meant to push downwards, not level, right? They are more attuned to pushing a weight downwards. So when on decline bench press, you're using 80% of your pectoral muscles, which is why most of your strength comes from a decline bench press. And I want you to develop that kind of strength, which can be transferred to any lift or any thing you do in your real life. You follow up your decline bench press with an incline bench press to work the upper pectoral muscles and you alternate that on the next week instead of the incline bench press you do the regular bench press because regular bench press involves a lot of your pectoral muscles all throughout with not so much focus on the entire range of the pectoral muscles but if you're going to compete in power lifting you need to keep developing your flat bench press right because in a power lifting competition you are going to compete in a, on a flat bench press they won't give the option of com competing on a decline or an incline so it's a movement and the more you train for a certain movement the better you get at it so you need to keep practicing it it's a great lift to do and it's a skill actually so it does add to your strength but it's also a skill so i suggest you start practicing it from now on so that when you move on to higher levels if you ever want to compete you don't lag behind in that skill right so replace you alternate between bench presses and incline bench presses on alternate weeks and then you move on to alternating between barbell overhead presses and dumbbell overhead presses now the reason i alternate this is because a barbell overhead press is a lift you're using your entire body to push the weight up both your hands are working in unison to push the weight up but in a dumbbell overhead press both your hands are working independently so you are not developing a lopsided strength you're allowing both your shoulders to develop equally otherwise what happens if you constant, constantly train with barbells and or, or dumbbells like especially if you train constantly with barbells you tend to develop only one side more because always your low, weaker side will keep filling in your heavier side will push and your weaker side will keep filling in and even you won't realize that 
same thing in a bench press same thing in a decline bench press your weaker side then always stays weak to overcome this i insist that you train one week with dumbbells and one week with barbells unless you are going to a competition with insists on competing with barbells then you stick to training with barbells towards competition season but once out of competition season if you're sticking to this routine alternate between dumbbells and barbells every week so that you have a more uniformly developed body and uniformly developed strength to the end you finish it up with lateral raises which targets your middle deltoid which is your shoulder muscle again but the central one your deltoids are in three parts right so your red delt you worked out on the back day because it's a pulling muscle now you work out your anterior deltoid with your overhead press now you work out your middle deltoid with lateral raises right once you're done with lateral raises you do parallel bar dips which might be tough for beginners but since this is level 3 i am hoping you can do it if you can't you just move on to the next one which is a cable push down or you replace parallel bar dips with a decline close grip bench press right towards the end again like on push day on pull day you did biceps two exercises of biceps now you're doing two exercises of triceps we're doing a parallel bar dip or a cable push down or a cable push down or a close grip decline bench press so you worked out your triceps you're done with your push day again the next day you follow up with cardio and you are done with a great week of workouts and get your rest day get your nutrition right and i bet within 12 weeks if you're going to follow this chart that i'm putting down here you are going to be in a fabulous fabulous shape one query i had was from a person who was into bodybuilding and that uh, following this workout i don't see any workouts for shrugs put in like if you want to do shrugs please do shrugs but if you're going to follow the workouts i've given here you are anyways going to end up developing your traps deadlifts does put a lot of load on the traps all the workouts given in there on the pull day actually put a lot of pressure on your traps and you are going to develop them unless you are like magnificently deficit in them so if you want to put in shrugs it's a matter of choice you can put in shrugs I personally don't do it because I ride the motorbike a lot. My shrug, my traps are already sore all day long because of riding and everything I do. And my workout covers are pretty much most of it. If you want to put in an exercise or two, please feel free to do so. But as for the chart, please follow it to the T. Any doubts, any questions, feel free to ask me. I'll gladly help you out. And I hope this helps all of you. Stay tuned to Battlefit Plus. We have a lot more content coming up. This is Pushkaraj Sharke signing out for Battlefit. Stay strong. If you like the content I have put out, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and do share it with your friends if you found it useful. I would love to have your feedback, and I would love to know what more content I can develop for you guys. And of course, if you are on Instagram, do post pics of how your body is shaping out with this workout with the hashtag Project Battlefit. I'd love to see you guys there. This is Pushkaraj Sharke signing out for Battlefit Plus.